Welcome everybody to the sustainability webinar series. Today we have a for h agent in Sarasara County. I'm going to introduce you in a second, but today the topic of this is going to be 4-H, so we're pretty excited to have you. Um, before we start, just want to let you know that if you have questions, please type them in either in the chat box, which you have access to, but there's also a QA uh, box. So either way, you can type your questions there and I will address them. I'll take notes and I'll pass them on to Sarah Davis. And with that, we'll start. Um, we also have, today we have Krista Kerbis. She is the agriculture agent in Manatee County. She will be representing Manatee County in terms of 4-H questions as well. And we have a co-host as well, Michelle Atkinson. She is the hort environmental horticultural agent in Manatee County. So pretty happy that you attended this webinar today. Um, I had the pleasure to work with Sarah Davis. She is a 4-H agent. She's very passionate about teaching about the environment and interpretation. She works with adults and children, but she's definitely passionate about working with youth. And she's going to be able to tell a little bit more about her programs and things that she does. So with that, I'm happy to pass this along to Sarah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Armando. I'm really uh, glad to be here today and to talk a little bit about the 4-H uh, program. And a shout out to uh, Diana Smith from Manatee County, who is the retired 4-H agent, who is my mentor. So thank you, Krista, for being the interim person uh, while they put the search on for her replacement. Um, but again, welcome. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. We're gonna talk a little bit about 4-H and sustainability. 4-H has been around for more than 100 years. And I say that speaks definitely to sustainability uh, when things have been around for quite some time. To me, that always resonates with sustainability. Uh, so again, I'm the youth development, 4-H youth development agent in Sarasota County, and uh, uh, super excited to be here today. Uh, a little bit about extension. So 4-H is part of the University of Florida IFAS extension uh, system. And uh, extension is basically uh, the partnership with our local counties and our, the opportunity uh, for uh, the University of Florida to extend uh, the research and our outreach to our local communi communities across the state. 4-H uh, is in 67 counties across the state of Florida. And as I mentioned, Extension, 4-H uh, is a part of Extension, and it's a partnership in terms of with the particular county, uh, the University of Florida, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. We use university research and resources to address local needs uh, through community initiatives, classes, outreach, and uh, volunteer opportunities. Uh, so basically, Extension is uh, a way for us to provide practical education to help out our residents in the various counties uh, across the state because we want to basically help uh, you all build a better future for Florida. Uh, in Sarasota and Manatee as well, we represent a lot of different core uh, areas. So each county may be a little bit different in the areas that they represent. Uh, in Sarasota, uh, we have uh, actually 14 different uh, programs. And here is just a display of some of the programs that we represent uh, in Florida. I'm sorry, in Sarasota, which is in Florida. <clears throat> So, and 4-H falls under our youth uh, development programming. Uh, so, extension really touches our world or your world in um, many, many, many different ways. Uh, we have a lot of different programs that you may have seen uh, in different uh, capacities. 4-H uh, is one of many. Um, Armando is our Sea Grant agent in Sarasota. And... Um, you can see that we represent and out, do outreach about many different programs across the state and within our county as well. So in terms of 4-H, uh, the youth development program, we provide uh, educational experiences uh, through learn by doing approach. Just gonna go back to my slide there for a second. Because uh, we want to help the youth gain knowledge and skills that they need to be responsible, productive citizens. 
And this um, mission is accomplished by creating safe and inclusive learning environments, which involve caring adults and utilizing the expertise and resources of the University of Florida and the Nationwide Land Grant uh, University. So we want to help youth um, gain the skills, follow their passions to become productive and contributing members of society. Uh, so when did 4-H start? Um, in Florida, it actually uh, started, uh, it seems like the earliest date is 1909. Um, this is an early photo uh, from uh, tomato clubs and basically across the state in the early, across the country in the early 1900s. Uh, there was quite a movement to get youth involved in different activities and involve, um, incorporate education in their environment, um, mostly in agricultural environments, and connect them with different opportunities. And so across this, the country, in many different states, there was um, tomato clubs, uh, created for uh, girls and corn clubs created for boys. So this photo is from our State 4-H archive collection and it's showing uh, the Girls Tomato Club and their exhibit at the Escambia County Fair uh, um, in 1912, I think this photo uh, was from. And then the boys, um, had their corn clubs. And so this is a, another photo uh, from uh, a photo in Gainesville at a research, at one of our research stations with the 4-H corn club uh, with the boys proud of the corn um, that's on display. So the idea that was coming around in the early 1900s with uh, those partnerships with Extension, the land grant universities and the counties is that they were having some challenges introducing new um, technologies, new ways to grow um, crops and new ways to handle livestock and new different um, research uh, information that they wanted to share uh, with the farmers. And so uh, these clubs, they came up with the idea and it happened across the country in a couple different places to share um, the research and the information from um, the land grant university in Florida, the University of Florida, in our case, share that information with the kids. And so um, they might have been improved seed varieties or different ways to handle livestock, but they um, educated the youth or gave the youth different opportunities to uh, learn different things. And it had a hands-on experiential learning approach. Learn by doing has always um, been the um, approach for 4-H. And so through the, that approach, the kids were able to learn different techniques. And then the adults were like, hey, they're able to grow corn or grow tomatoes better than I can. And so that was a way for extension agents to work um, and help introduce new uh, technologies that farmers could uh, see successful. If their kids were growing corn in a successful way, then maybe they could try it out and then eventually um, adopt new technologies or new ways of doing um, uh, agriculture or production or the things that they were uh, involved in. So 4-H uh, has been up and running uh, again in Florida since the um, early 1900s. And these are just a couple of different images of some of the corn clubs and tomato clubs. Um, and then since called boys and girls clubs and eventually um, a little bit before 1920 or in the 1920s, um, for it became known as 4-H. Uh, representing our head, heart, health, and hands. And I'll get into a little bit more about our uh, background with that. So there's some girls making some baskets. They had what they called short courses at in Gainesville and brought groups of girls and then groups of boys to the University of Florida for different um, courses on different topics. And we still do that today, which is kind of exciting through a week event called 4-H uh, University. And so um, here's a couple of more photos in the 1920s. A couple of youth with their prized uh, sow, uh, their swine at the fair uh, on the bottom corner. 
Uh, there's a few photos of some counties that came to University of Florida here on the top right. Uh, in our district, there's uh, Hillsboro and Lee County were represented in the 1920s. So we have a pretty long history of 4-H uh, in our area. And then here's some clubs checking out a tractor, an extension agent, or 4-H um, speaker, or, per, or they said a professor possibly teaching the youth about um, handling poultry. And he's got a little chicken there. And so it's just kind of fascinating the history of 4-H and how it has continued today to help our youth um, get excited about different topics and of course has its strong roots uh, in agriculture um, dating back to the early 1900s. So as I mentioned, 4-H uh, is um, again that partnership with our local county uh, government and those uh, four H's represent our head, heart, hands, and health. And this originated with from philosophies in the late 1800s that they really wanted youth to have hands-on learning and focus on those experiences to have the different opportunities um, that they can be involved with. As I mentioned, it's grounded in the experiential learning model. And they really, 4-H focuses on targeting life skills for youth. So through these, the different projects and different opportunities that youth have, um, they have that learn by doing approach and get excited about different topics and different um, activities. So we have a pledge. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. And so at each meeting or each gathering for 4-H, the youth uh, recognize the pledges. They do the Pledge of Allegiance, and then they say the 4-H um, pledge. And so through 4-H projects and relationships, youth build better lives and become better stewards, uh, employees, community citizens, and leaders. The learn by doing approach helps youth acquire knowledge, develop life skills, and form attitudes to enable them to become self-directed, productive, and contributing members of society. 4-H uh, learning is experiential where youth learn life skills. And on, the, on my slide, I have this um, comprehensive wheel of life skills. Uh, so the many skills and the connections to the head, heart, health, and hands that we want to engage and encourage our youth um, to follow or learn. Uh, so youth uh, set goals. They keep records and they participate in events and activities on a county, state, and national level. Uh, to keep their learning uh, strong. So with its roots in agriculture, as I mentioned, 4-H still includes some of the more traditional uh, livestock uh, programs and is still very successful across our state uh, with these uh, different opportunities uh, for youth. Uh, major 4-H initiatives really focus on healthy living, science, and citizenship, citizenship and uh, leadership. And so um, we're, we want to kind of bring those kids in if they're excited about certain topics and really help develop their leadership, citizenship, and those life skills that I mentioned on the, uh, on the slide uh, previously. There was a study done probably a few years back now. Um, and this is just some, some data uh, back from that. But uh, according to that study, it was in 2015, the Youth Impact Report, 4-H uh, youth are four times more likely to give back uh, to their community, uh, two times uh, more likely to make um, healthier uh, choices, uh, two times more likely to participate in STEM or science activities. And in uh, Florida, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math uh, is a super initiative for 4-H because we've recognized that it leads to important skills uh, useful um, in the workforce. Um, also in uh, Sarasota and also with UF, environmental stewardship is a key component of our comprehensive plan in the county as well as our UF, uh, what they call a roadmap. 
um, basically our strategic plan. So there's opportunities that we want to engage our youth in so that they can also become better stewards of our natural resources. Just catching my breath there. So as I mentioned, uh, we have um, an experiential learning model approach and there's uh, just basically that experiential learning um, model graphic at the bottom of the screen there. But basically we want youth to experience, to share, to process, to maybe gain that skill and maybe uh, show that they're applying it in another, um, another field or in another way. And so with all of these many, many, many life skills, there's an opportunity for them to learn skills, maybe while raising a uh, steer that they're getting ready um, to uh, show at the fair. And they're learning communication skills because they have to talk to the judge. Uh, they're learning uh, communication skills because they have to figure out how to get the steer to the fair and how that's going to work and who they're going to, uh, if they have to borrow a trailer, if they have their own trailer and when they're going to do it and the time that they're going to do it. They also um, look at uh, economic skills or gain economic skills through accounting for the different projects that they're involved in. And as I mentioned, um, 4-H is not just about agriculture, 4-H uh, engages kids in a wide variety of projects. Um, and so here in Sarasota, uh, we have a couple of different uh, focuses for our program. We work on uh, training our volunteers so that they can help support the youth in positive youth development. We do STEM education, environmental education, and stewardship. And inclu included in our science focus are animal sciences. So we have a strong group of youth that are involved in uh, livestock uh, projects as well. We've got 14 clubs, one in-school club. We have around 70 volunteers. And through school enrichment, which is another opportunity that we reach uh, youth, we had almost uh, over 1,800 youth involved in 2019 in different projects reaching out to school-aged uh, youth. Uh, we've got a lot of other opportunities because if you'll see under curriculum and event opportunities, there's 200 plus 4-H project areas. So kids can get involved in the things that they are super, super excited about. So there are opportunities in 4-H to uh, go to Washington to DC. This is a, a program called Leadership Focus that we had an opportunity a couple years ago uh, to take a group of youth uh, to the National 4-H Center and they were able to learn about different uh, leadership skills and um, even gain some skills in uh, how to uh, figure out what kind of leader they are, what kind of leaders um, or legacy leaders in terms of the places that we visited and saw at uh, in Washington, uh, D.C. And through school enrichment, uh, Sarasota has been involved in quite a few different uh, projects. So uh, we see 4-H is delivering our opportunities in a couple of different ways. And one way is through school enrichment. And so this was a program that we did a couple years ago where we did uh, on-site um, science uh, experiments and projects with eighth graders that came to our office and got to um, learn a little bit more about natural cycles. Um, they interpret looking at different sinks and sources of the sinks in terms of where these um, nutrients and our biosphere are going. And they got to use scientific, the scientific process to interpret the data and um, learn a little bit more while they were at our office. That program reached, I think, over 2,000 eighth graders that year. So it was quite an on taking of our office and a great collaboration, not just uh, with all the agents. So it was myself and all the other, many of our, our natural resource uh, agents, we have um, six or seven of them that participated in that uh, project. 
So here they were able to look at the water quality, look at turbidity, look at different um, parameters to look at the water and figure out the health of the habitat. We also have another program with a school in Richmond called a Life, Learning in Florida's Environment. And this is a partnership or historically between um, DEP and uh, the school district. But in Sarasota, our natural resource and ecology educator, Dr. Catherine Clements, uh, coordinated this with Extension. And so again, many of the agents in our office had an opportunity to work with uh, mostly fourth fourth graders, fourth and fifth graders that did um, three different field trips. So throughout the entire year, they got to visit and come to a freshwater, uh, uplands, and coastal uh, habitat where they did hands-on science, hands-on learning um, directly in the uh, environment and um, learned a little bit too about different careers and opportunities um, in those ecosystems. So they did different labs. There's in the middle, they did a carbon cycle lab where they learned a little bit more about how carbon moves uh, through the environment. That was part of our eighth grade school enrichment there. Using microscopes, we're in the, in the field and really um, not just talking to them about do, uh, science, but where they're actually doing science. Again, that hands-on uh, learning approach uh, so they can experience it. We also have a great program for third graders where they get a little bit of uh, idea of growing their own agricultural product, uh, radishes, and they um, have an opportunity to explore a little bit where their food comes from. They get seeds uh, from our extension office in Sarasota. They have a record book that they have to keep about their process. And they talk a little bit about, you know, what they learned and how the radishes then are turned back into our office and they actually get judged. And then uh, we send those comments and that those books back to the school uh, so they can um, see how they did. And then as I mentioned uh, before with the 4-H projects, that's really at the core of what we call our 4-H community club program. So you often hear, we may even have a few on the call that are part of 4-H clubs, uh, that uh, a youth is part of a club. And so they join different clubs, sometimes based on their interest, based on, hey, their friend's going to this meeting and they want to just check it out and see what's going on. Um, and they, they can choose from, you know, hundreds of projects. We have at least about 50 um, that we focus on uh, in Florida. And they, those projects are science, engineering, technology, animals and agriculture, food and nutrition, outdoor adventures, marine science, public speaking, art and wildlife, just to name a few. Um, they're experiential and we really impress on our volunteers that we want the youth to be hands-on uh, learning. So a large uh, portion of our youth uh, in Sarasota are, actually, are involved in livestock uh, projects. Uh, we have a huge group of youth that uh, show uh, steer and dairy um, small animals at our uh, local uh, fair. Um, but through this process, again, they help kind of develop those life skills. So the project is kind of like the hook. It's that uh, spark that we, uh, that we open the eyes of the youth and kind of see that smile, the smile, the passion that we see on that child's eyes, what we strive to engage and foster in our Sarasota County youth. Um, and then we hope to engage them in other opportunities, as I mentioned, that hopefully they can travel to other places um, and gain other skills and get other uh, experiences. And so we have livestock. Uh, we also have a lot of youth that grow plants and they also showcase many of those plants um, at our uh, county fair. Uh, kids also have an opportunity to do what we call demonstrations and illustrated talks. And so we really encourage our youth to um, take 
uh, their experiences and they translate them into little mini talks about how to do something or the cool things that their club is doing. And um, this group of youth right here in the square with the orange were the four youth in their bright white shirts from our in-school club, the green in me, are talking a little bit about what their club did uh, for uh, service and what kind of things their clubs are involved in. And then two of the youth actually went on to um, the county competition. They earned a blue ribbon and then went on to districts, earned a medallion, and that actually got them a scholarship to go to 4-H camp. And they had never been to 4-H camp um, before that. So Again, we're really trying to hook the youth, get them excited, and continue to provide them further uh, experiences and further opportunities. We also want them to learn, uh, again, like as I mentioned, to be good stewards of our environment. This is at a Siesta Key Beach uh, a couple years back when our county council, which is our teen uh, leadership group, which organizes opportunities for the county, had a beach cleanup, and here's the youth uh, with all the, the items that they uh, collected. And given that we try to do learning as well, the clipboards, we accounted for uh, all the different types of items and things that they found on the beach and had a little discussion about how can we avoid uh, some of that littering and some of the microplastics and other things that we see uh, on the beach. Uh, other youth, this is our, our county council a couple years back as well, organized a drive for uh, getting um, supplies for a local animal shelter. So we're, again, on all different levels, trying to get the youth to think beyond themselves and develop those uh, active citizenship skills and taking care of our community. And then in hopes of, like I mentioned, uh, we want youth to consider and attend other opportunities. And so uh, across the state, uh, 4-H has four different camp, or sorry, three camps. And this is uh, Camp Cloverleaf, which is not too far from Sarasota and Manatee, where our youth actually uh, get to go camping and experience the outdoors and explore their curiosities about the natural world. Uh, they develop outdoor skills in archery, kayaking, fishing, and environmental sciences. And at Camp Cloverleaf, we really bring uh, science to life in this living laboratory. They get to observe. Uh, some of them uh, take fishing classes where they get to actually go out, do some fishing on the lake, identify some of the species. They do a lot of uh, team building and they participate in uh, so many activities uh, to promote healthy lifestyle choices. And so kids are always super excited to go, uh, go to camp. It's a five day overnight uh, camp and um, they just love it. Um, so yeah, so again, 4-H is really about following those, have, getting the kids to follow their, the, their passions. And again, was founded on the belief that when kids are empowered to pursue their passions and chart their own course, their unique skills grow and take shape, helping them to become true leaders in their lives, careers, and communities. And as I mentioned, we deliver this 4-H program in many different forms and fashions here in Sarasota, as well, in Man as well as in Manatee and across the state of Florida. Um, the theme of National 4-H is really about inspiring kids to do, to get involved, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more in a, a minute or so about the state project that many kids can get involved with. But um, as I mentioned, we still have our core roots rooted in agriculture, but youth are involved in so many other opportunities as well. Uh, so we are trying, we are addressing the needs of urban, suburban, and rural youth across the state. Uh, so other opportunities beyond participating in the club or doing something uh, with a school enrichment program, uh, youth, uh, so for this past January, 
and um, and the year before in April, youth got to travel to Tallahassee to meet with uh, legislative aides and learn a little bit more about our uh, legislative legislative processes. We got to meet with different representatives and talk to them a little bit about all the great things that kids do uh, in 4-H. Um, uh, up here at the on the left side is an opportunity for uh, youth at 4-H University. They actually did a DNA extraction uh, lab um, with uh, PhD uh, students at the at the University of Florida during 4-H University. And so at 4-H University, it's an opportunity for the youth to learn um, about different fields and careers that they're interested in. Here down at the, the bottom uh, where they're standing outside of this um, truck is the uh, response um, is the place, sorry, my husband was interrupting me. Um, down here at the left is the uh, community response program during disaster. So the uh, University of Florida Veterinarian um, Hospital has a whole response team that goes and serves communities after a hurricane uh, or after other, uh, maybe during fires or other opportunities where their um, pets may need help and are stressed out. And so they send that um, trailer and supplies to areas in Florida um, responding to those different uh, disasters. Um, and then other opportunities, the youth, uh, as I mentioned, they can do different talks and they can go and compete. Uh, so they have uh, what we call state events where we have youth compete at um, on the Florida level. And last year, uh, one of our youth, Caitlin McCord, won, um, was won the public speaking um, greatest honor at state events. So she then went on to compete nationally uh, for pu public speaking this past uh, January. So there's a, a lot of opportunity uh, through our animal sciences department at um, at University of Florida. Youth can participate over the summer in raising a hog and uh, taking care of it and then um, get to see uh, from the beginning to the end of that project and go back to University of Florida in um, the fall or in I think late August where they actually go through the processing uh, process for swine and um, then they have to do a demonstration and keep all those records. So they really learn a lot when they get um, take on these projects and can delve in deeper and learn all the aspects of um, that particular project. So as I mentioned, and given that we are celebrating uh, 50 years of Earth Day uh, this year, uh, the Florida 4-H uh, State Youth Council has decided to focus on revitalizing Florida. So about every two years, uh, the Florida 4-H uh, youth decide on a different project, and it's a committee of youth because 4-H is about empowering the youth. So the adults aren't sitting up there going, this is what you need to do. Um, the youth that are involved in our state council um, meet and discuss and think about different ways that we can involve and engage youth across the state. So our state 4-H project uh, through 2021 is called Revitalize a Florida. And it really is focusing on disaster preparedness and recovery. Um, but if you feel that there's some project that will help revitalize Florida, you're also uh, welcome to do that. So there's a couple different options for youth to get involved in that state project or even agents to collaborate with, uh, with 4-H uh, in their county to um, support the state uh, project. So these are just a couple of uh, sample ideas uh, for projects and um, you could create a family emergency plan, prepare a first aid kit. So thinking about ways that youth can get involved in helping um, prepare or recover uh, from, from a disaster. Another um, opportunity that the uh, youth are uh, focusing on as well is planting trees. 
And so planting trees does a lot uh, for our uh, environment, um, improves, can help improve the climate, and um, is an opportunity to help, it can stabilize shorelines and uh, you name it, uh, trees help our, um, help us on many, many, many levels. And so part of the Revitalized Project is also uh, to encourage youth to plant trees. And you can then send in, if there's forms, um, in this previous slide, there's a link, and we will email this out to the participants. Uh, but there's a link here to the project guide, and there's a form that you fill out, an opportunity for youth to gain um, uh, basically what they call different awards at the bronze, a silver, gold, and emerald standard uh, to participate. So check out that project guide if you're interested in participating, and I'm also more than happy to answer any questions you have about that. But um, given that it's Earth Day, I'm going to say let's plant some trees across uh, Florida since we're celebrating 50 years of Earth Day this month and this year, and it's a good opportunity to help revitalize uh, Florida. So, um, just a couple more slides and then we'll take some questions. Uh, additional uh, learning opportunities uh, here in Sarasota. We've got an upcoming class called 4-H Investigator. Um, there also our YouTube channel has a few things for youth on a science related to the LIFE program that I talked about earlier. National 4-H has all kinds of things, uh, activities and guides for kids to do online. We have a few colleagues in Pinellas County that are uh, that do Wildlife Wednesdays, and they uh, wanted us to share that because it's good um, connection for youth to get involved or good information for youth. Uh, Palm Beach 4-H <coughs> has a YouTube channel with different uh, short activities you can do. And um, all across the nation, different 4-H programs are uh, participating. This is University of Nebraska, which had some virtual home learning. So lots of opportunities um, in 4-H, and we want to share those with you and get the word out. So I'm happy to take any questions if you have any questions. Well, Sarah, that was great. Very informative. I learned a lot, even though I'm an uh, agent already that works next to you and, and many of these programs. I forgot to introduce myself, so I'm the Marine and Coastal Agent. So like Sarah was saying, we do other agents as well contribute to the 4-H program. What a great program. And we have a couple of questions. I'm gonna start with one that says, how early ch can children join a 4-H club? Oh yeah, great question. I didn't bring that up. 4-H um, uh, youth can join starting at age five. We we calculate that based on the age you are on September 1st. So as long as the youth has turned five on September 1st, they can join 4-H. Our young ones, we refer to them as clover buds, uh, five to seven year olds. And uh, through the clover bud project, it's really about exploring, uh, learning a little bit about 4-H and doing some fun activities. Uh, when you get to be, um, eight years old, then you can start participating in some of the larger uh, animal projects or uh, science projects, the competitions, and some of the events. So we do try to uh, cater the events to um, specific ages. So then we have juniors, intermediates, and seniors. And so at the senior level, which is age 14 to 18, uh, that's where the youth are traveling around the state uh, going to 4-H University can get involved in even more uh, state events and national opportunities. Great. Okay, another question is, so each county has a 4-H agent, correct? Correct. Okay, and so is that the agent in, that will provide information about the type of clubs? So how can you find out more about the type of clubs available in your county? Yeah, so most uh, every agent Every county has an agent, and in some cases, some of the larger counties with larger populations have more than one agent. But every uh, county has a website through U University of Florida IFAS, uh, so you can just go to our University of Florida IFAS website in the search window and just type in 4-H, and then it'll pop up um, those different opportunities. You can go to your county extension website, so if you just type in for instance, here, Sarasota Extension, um, that usually 
that will bring up the website uh, for the county and then they have a youth development link that'll show the different clubs. So on our website, we have all, we have all of our, we have 15 clubs listed um, and the contact information. You can also reach out to our office. Um, to do that as well. And I can share my contact. I can go back to the slide that has my contact information on it. Okay. I think we have it there. And also I want to give the time, um, the opportunity to Krista to talk about the 4-H program in Manatee County. Krista, can you um, activate your video or your remove yourself? Yes, I can. Um, well, I'm just getting started here in Manatee County. Um, haven't really had a chance to dive in and um, see everything, all the clubs that we have um, going. Um, very similar to Sarasota, we have diverse clubs, anything from um, photography, cooking, um, home-based clubs, um, all the way through to the livestock clubs, um, and also school enrichment programming as well. Um, one thing I'm not sure if Sarah covered or not, uh, Michelle was asking me um, in a private chat um, if Sarah had covered uh, the restrictions currently due to the uh, COVID-19 that we're under. Um, Sarah, did you have a chance to cover the restrictions? No, I, I did not. Um, I mean, currently right now, clubs are only allowed to meet virtually uh, until um, until we get through the pandemic and things open up. But if you Correct. want to add anything, I'm more than happy. Correct. Um, and that is through the end of July. So unfortunately, a lot of our traditional camps and summer camps and stuff like that are having to be modified. Uh, we are trying to get virtual experiences out for the youth and every county's um, doing something a little different. Um, Sarasota County, I'm sure, is going to have virtual experiences available out, as will uh, Manatee County. Um, I do know I'm involved with uh, the Youth Field Day at the Range Cattle Research and Education Center that we do every other year, and that will be available um, through a virtual experience the week of July 29th, I believe, or June 29th. Um, each day that week at two o'clock, we will have a virtual experience available for the youth. Um, and I know there's several others throughout the state uh, happening for the youth on that front. So uh, Sarah did a great job covering the 4-H youth program. Um, many of the programs are very similar, but at the same time um, diverse in their own way uh, to meet the needs of the youth in that county uh, more specifically. So. Great. If there's any other questions? I'll yeah, there are. Actually, there's one more here. Please come in. Well. Yeah, there's what's, what's going to happen with 4-H University this year. Would there be an online alternative? 4-H University is canceled, unfortunately, but Florida 4-H, as well as the agents across the state, are working on alternate opportunities. So there likely will be some virtual experiences related to some of the workshops and some of the information shared at 4-H University. Now the state events is still happening, but in a virtual format and the Florida 4-H portfolio that's due, um, due to your agent before June 1st, because the, the last deadline is June 1st, but the portfolio interview process and opportunity for scholarships is also still happening um, virtual, virtually. So any, seniors listening, make sure that you do apply for that opportunity because you can do different trips uh, or you can qualify for different scholarships if you're graduating. That's great. And uh, can either one of you expand a little bit more into about the 5% that each agents have in 4-H program as well? Uh, I'll start and then I'm sure Krista can fill in as well because she's I know she does a lot of great things in the livestock arena uh, with uh, some of the 4-H youth in Manatee. So of uh, each agent in um, across the state in their in different programs other than 4-H. So for instance, Armando is, is the Sea Grant agent. 
he has a requirement to of at least 5% of his time across the year to help and support a 4-H. And so um, it's an opportunity for other agents to collaborate and work on different projects. And it's an opportunity for the youth to learn about different um, topics or different programs that they're uh, interested in. Krista, you want to add to that? Uh, here in Manatee County, um, we're very fortunate, and it's been a long um, established tradition, I guess uh, you could say, uh, for the agents to donate at least 5%, because that 5% is not a hard and fast 5%, it's at least 5%. Um, so as 4-H agents, and I started out as a 4-H agent, so I have a great um, appreciation for 4-H agents, um, that Anytime an agent can give back to the 4-H program, they're only enhancing that 4-H program. So actually here in Manatee County, um, Michelle Atkinson, even though she's a um, commercial horticulture agent, I believe is her title, um, working with landscapers um, on a daily basis, she partners with Angela Collins, our Sea Grant agent, and they offer a, a, a marine science day camp one day during the summer. Uh, our um, commercial or nursery agent, sorry, and our vegetable agent um, traditionally uh, partner up and offer a green and growing day camp opportunity for youth to get out into the field to the vegetable fields and also do some, they've done some lab experiment work um, and some other hands-on work to get the youth involved in the vegetable uh, industry and it just keeps going on and on and on and most of our agents also participate one day at the um, 4-H camp with various opportunities for the youth to participate in classes while they're there at camp. Um, Michelle's reminding me I left FCS out. Um, they also have uh, living on my own um, some uh, simulation that they do with the youth in partnership with 4-H where the youth are given a budget and an opportunity and they have to um, live within that confine. Um, so they have that experience before they reach adulthood and it's real life. And they also have tours or visits to local banks and other um, financial institutions. So there's a lot of different diversity uh, that happens. Uh, that can enhance the 4-H program, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, a lot of the agents do go above and beyond, not just here in Manatee County, but across the state. Um, and that only, like I said, enhances the 4-H program. So as a 4-H agent, I am I know they are very appreciative for any help that they get from the other agents. Um, like I said, as a former 4-H agent, uh, I see the benefit that comes from the other agents coming in. All right, just a couple more questions. So what is the most, what's your favorite thing of being a 4 agent, for each agent? Sarah, I'll let you have that one. Okay, I think the favorite thing about being a 4 agent, for each agent for me is uh, really working with the youth and educating our volunteers. So when I get to see um, the youth excited about the things that they're excited about, um, you know, that puts a smile on my face. Uh, you know, we had an opportunity last summer uh, with a, five or six other agents in our office. We did a Exploring Your Environment camp and uh, we took a group of youth all over Sarasota County and they got to do some hands-on science and they were just, you know, super excited to be outside and working um, uh, with all of us. And they even love to play Foursquare with Armando a few afternoons yes. too when we were done with our field trips. <laughs> so that's right. And I'm excited. Okay, let's see. Forage involvement rates now versus say five years ago or 10 years ago. Our kids are going to get more involved with the 4-H program. So comparing basically five to 10 years ago to now to the 4-H program. Um, I think it, it kind of like ebbs and flows with uh, time. Um, so I, as I understand, 
15, 20 years ago, we may have had a larger involvement in 4-H, but now with so many other activities and kids so busy with so many things, um, we, uh, for the last three to four years, have had around three to 400 youth in the community club program. Um, but then we reach probably um, hundreds to the thousands in our school enrichment program where they're working on different projects with their teachers uh, with 4-H. Um, so I think it kind of ebbs and flows. I think it's really important for kids to get involved um, in middle school because then once they get excited, they're more apt to continue on into high school. When they get into high school, they tend to get a little more busier. So we see some drop off for kids not as involved. Um, but I think if we can continue to push all the amazing activities that they can do and the scholarships that are available. I mean, um, there are scholarships through Florida 4-H the different animal shows and um, fairs and other opportunities offer scholarships. I know for with Manatee County and Sarasota County, we both have foundations which incredibly support our youth uh, programming and help support the youth in our community clubs attend different events and also do college uh, scholarships. Great. And we have another question that's came in. How have the local 4-H program changed as our counties have become more urban versus rural? Um, again, it's kind of an ebb and flow, but as we become more urban, we have more youth um, involved in different opportunities. So they may not be in a traditional livestock opportunity um, that has typically been associated with 4-H and still very strong in our history and our, our practice. Um, but yeah, so we have our in-school club um, focuses on all kinds of projects uh, from um, engineering to uh, science, scientific exploration, like we just did a bio blitz activity with that club in February before all of this pandemic um, stuff hit us. Um, so we are trying to expand and reach the urban youth as well in activities and things that they're passionate about. We also have a few what you call like cooperative farm sites, I guess would be the best way to explain it. So there's opportunities for youth that might live in an urban or suburban area to still um, raise an animal if they want to get involved. And then that animal is um, housed on one of those sites. And then they have to go daily to the farm uh, to go take care of that animal um, as they're learning about it and taking care of it. And then they and then ultimately show it at, at a fair. That's fantastic to hear. Well, I think that's it. Um, we're almost to the hour. So I just want to thank you again for, you know, what a wonderful presentation, Sarah and Krista, and for the host and the background helping uh, control the remotes. For everybody that joined us, thank you so much. Um, we will have another webinar series, uh, Sustainability Webinar, um, webinar, sorry, I'm saying webinar like three times, but anyway, next month, um, I forgot the date, but you can check in Eventbrite, you can go to our websites as well, and you can find more information. We will have this, okay, um, We'll have this recorded, as I said, and it's gonna be shared in our YouTube channel. So if you didn't have time to um, you know, stay for the whole thing or you wanna share with other people, you're more welcome to do so. And you can find us at, I think the link of the, we'll put up the link of the website of where you can find the double channel just in a second ago. I'm trying to copy and paste, but I'll paste it here for all the panelists and the attendees. Just give me one second, right there. So you will find that video of this presentation and the ones we've done before. As, as uh, Sarah was saying, this is the 50 year anniversary of Earth Day. So this month we actually held um, four webinars. So you can all find them there as well. And again, thank you for joining us. And this is a great experience. So thank you so much. Thank you, Armando. And thank you, Krista and Michelle as well. We really appreciate it. All right, well, bye now. Thank Thanks. <laughs>